And Are You Okay is a not safe for work podcast, so any young listeners are discouraged from continuing. However, we literally have no way to track that. So do whatever the hell you want and enjoy the show. He's like, the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! man. (laughs) He said, yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives on Drew Lane. (laughs) She's married to the Muffin Man. (laughs) She's married to the Muffin Man. Uh, The Muffin Man! The Muffin Man! (laughs) What a movie. That's a classic, bro. Classic. Absolute classic. The first three Shreks are goaded. Shrek, Shrek yeah. three, nah, Shrek three still goaded. Shrek three still goaded, but one and two definitely Shrek goated. five coming. Uh, I know. It's Duh. It's Random, but in the equal sequel, equal sequel uh category. They're like trying to make a Legally Blonde three. I was like Legally Blonde two wasn't that good. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should come up with some unique ideas in cinema. Word or 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 hear me out. Hear me I'm out. Listen. I'm listening. Or lay, lay it on me, we daddy, just y'all. keep laying into these cinematic universes, like Star Wars. Mm. <laughs> I see what she did there. That's right. You're listening to, and you're you okay? A Star Wars podcast. A Star Wars podcast. You're not safe for work. Take on all the things you know and love in a galaxy far, far away. I am one of your hosts, Mikey the Human Holocron himself, joined with the Rogue One, the Rogue Only, Matthew Porter, aka Matty Ice. Hit him with your other nicknames, brother. You know, a.k.a. Smack Talker Skywalker, a.k.a. the main main of the Grey Hoodie Gang, a.k.a. Broby One Kenobi, a.k.a. Mace Wind Dude, a.k.a. C3P Bro, you know. But you forgot yours, Darth Plagueis the Wise, because you're back. Oh, you're back to back. being in, You're back I'm to back. being informed, the human holocron himself. I am informed. We are back. We took a little break. We took a little break. You know, everyone gets burnt out from time to time. And, you know, life be lifing. That's just how it is. You know uh, why? And there's you know, and, and you know what we did. You know how we came back? How we, came we back. bypassed the capacitor. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Without that, that vital piece of knowledge, we never would have, you know, stopped the Falcon from blowing up. We wouldn't have. Um, we wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> we unfortunately By, come bypassed the capacitor. Name of this episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's the compressor, but we yeah, can probably. Put <laughs> Uh, we come back, unfortunately, on some sad news uh, and and some some lighthearted news. We're going to start with uh, the the obvious tragic. Uh, you know, I, actually, I'm not going to call it tragic because he he lived a very long yes. life with an incredible. More life. not those who commute with the force. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rejoice for them, You're right? They, they, for they become a part of the living force, and uh, James Earl Jones will be terribly missed. The voice. Of Darth Vader, the voice of Mufasa, um, from Matt's Man. favorite movie, Sandlot. He Yay! Is, my fucking guy, James Earl Jones, uh, man, the legend. Yeah, my my, his name is escaping me. What's this? Who is he in Sandlot? Uh, in the Sandlot? Oh uh, shit! Um, it'll come to me. <laughs> it'll like randomly pop into my head. It was the Beast. For some reason, I want to say Old Man Milton, but I think that might be Monster House. <laughs> it's very possible, but uh, you know, He's that like, you knew Babe Bruce. Bruce. He's like George. Yeah, I knew George, and he knew me. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, but you know, he storied career, and uh, we are so sad to hear about him. Oh, we should. I just want to spend some time talking about some of his Darth Vader moments, um, and then you know, Matt. We there's also some other Star Wars news that we're going to cover, like uh, Ewan McGregor getting. Uh, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We'll talk about that a little bit. And then uh, also... Uh, Mr. Myrtle. <laughs> Mr. Myrtle. <laughs> Mr. Myrtle. <laughs> Forever. Forever. <laughs> uh, but uh, 
but yeah, and then we also got some cool uh, shots that came out from Entertainment Weekly today from Skeleton Crew as we get closer and closer to its two-episode premiere on December 3rd. Um, but yeah, let, let, let's uh, talk about James Earl Jones and his prowess as Darth Vader. And also, do not hesitate to share other moments, Matt, that you love from this you. man's career um, as they you. come up in conversation. I have a um, question for you really quick. Sh- sure thing. Real fast. So, because I know you started playing Star Wars Outlaws. I actually did not. Oh, shit. All right, damn. Never mind. I ain't going to ask the question. I've been, I, I've been that you, busy. YouTube, YouTube uh, <laughs> spoiled something for me. <laughs> this apropos oh, no. to the com- oh, this no. apropos to this conversation. So I'm not going to ask it. That. Well, I'm going to ask you to not ask me. I got you. We will see. I'll see if I can avoid spoilers. For uh, usually I can't, but we'll see what happens. Um, got it. So yeah, got it, got Star it. Wars Outlaws. We will cover it at some point. You know, once I play it. Uh, yeah, I'm about to ask. To I haven't be, gotten to it yet either. So. To be completely honest, we're busy guys. We have two podcasts, maybe a third on the way. Hey, you feel me? New song. <laughs> Let's go. Yay. I don't know. Yay. Um, <laughs> anyways, as we say here, James Earl Jones. Uh, Matt, tell me, give me your favorite Darth Vader line that he sunk into your memory. Oh, yeah. All right, so I don't know if it's my favorite. I'll start. I'll I'll. St- I'll think on my favorite, but the one that has left the biggest impression in my brain that I quote regularly is the false is strong with this one. I say that all the time. (laughs) Anytime somebody I know does some dope shit, that's that's usually my my uh, my praise for them. Ah, the false is strong with this one. (laughs) So that's definitely like that's definitely the one that I quote the absolute most (laughs) for sure. For sure. Um, I know this is a weird one, but uh, she's part of the Rebel Alliance. Take her away is something I use way too often. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Commonly directed at my better half, <laughs> Ray the Ruiner. But um, yeah, <laughs> that one is is definitely one of my favorites. There's a ton from A New Hope that are you really know, good, honestly. Like. Uh, uh... Another one, so not not the infamous no, but that's always get gets yeah. you gets you a good laugh. But um, just the screams when he was like lifting the emperor, like was getting shocked. Just, ah, ah, oh, <laughs> just those screams <laughs> with the wheeze. The ones from Return of a Jedi. Yeah, yeah, the ones from the Return of Jedi. Yep. <laughs> like, ah, ah. <laughs> like, <laughs> when, when Luke was hacking away at him. Yeah, it's always a. It's funny because like, as the character of Darth Vader and just James Earl Jones's like voice. Uh, he's very, he's like monotone, but ex, uh, express. Ex, I always say this word. Have issue, yeah. ex, not expressive. I want to always say like express, expression it, expressive. I don't know, but expressive. It's yeah. fine. We'll go with that one. But like he's monotone and expressive all at the same time. So it's just like in certain scenes where Darth Vader like doesn't sound as robotic, it always makes me laugh because like his voice still like just sounds like robotic. So like when Darth Vader like emotes, it makes it always mm-hmm. tickles me. So like the no and the ah <laughs> like things of that. Or, like I don't remember what the line that he said to Luke was, uh when Luke was basically like saying that, oh like you're still good. He's like, I, I just can't remember what he said, but like when he like kind of yelled at him, he's like, You're wrong, yeah, son. Yeah. I can't remember what he said. Like, like yeah, something yeah. along those lines, but I always like got a kick out of like when Darth Vader would like get animated, like show mm-hmm. emotion. It would always sound funny to me. Yeah, there's also I I'm sure you will not be shocked by this, but I'm also quite a big fan of some of his lines from Rebels. Um of course. The, the fact that he continued to reprise his role as Vader. Yeah, yeah fact. Uh, even as the series progressed, whenever Lucasfilm was doing something and Vader was involved, um, if it wasn't a video game, I feel like James Earl Jones was, was in, right? Um, and so for Rebels, he came back to reprise the role. And, he wasn't um, in Fallen Order and... Um, well, I don't always no, forget was, the name of was, the second game. Uh, <laughs> he was fall- but he, he, yeah, he, he was actually fall. voiced by somebody else. And I was going to say... Damn, they did a really good I job. Do, <laughs> I do really like... Um, I do really like uh, his... In the Force Unleashed games, there's something where he's like... Star Killer's like yelling at him and he's like, I lied, but it's not James Earl Jones. <laughs> Just a fun Darth Vader moment. Um... <laughs> but yeah, she so was I, alive. I felt it. I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> but <laughs> when, when like, I'm not. I'm not scared of you. And he's like, then you will die braver than most. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a, yeah. That's a good that one. A good. That's a good. It's one. so. It's so funny. Uh, 
we've we've talked about this before on previous episodes so go back and listen because i'm not going to say it again to take away from our views <laughs> but, but briefly <laughs> we've talked about like i often struggle with like that final connective piece of like that anakin and darth vader are the same person just from like a movie standpoint not like yeah. i obviously understand his character arc and i know that's him for sure but it, it but is they read as different characters to you yes they can read as two totally com- like different characters and i think a big part of that is as Darth Vader when James Earl Jones speaks like his cadence his delivery just like, even the sentences it feels like poetry like he's just kind of just like skating along like like yeah. certain words like you will die braver than most like that's like that's a soliloquy like that's a haiku like <laughs> shit and it's just like I could never hear Anakin saying some shit like that in the way that Hayden played it I know like he would have moments like where he would say like deep introspective shit but for the most part he was like a, a angsty teenager into an angsty man in his like early 20s so it was just like right. so it was just like the 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 cadence and tone of speech and like sentences that he would choose to say is kind of like a big part is like it hard for me to like connect them but obi-wan helped a lot with that with like the cutting in yes. and out yes. which is another I, w- I will say that is one of to give an answer an actual answer that is one of my favorite moments because i loved how they cut in and out of hayden christensen's voice with james earl jones's voice because yes. like the mask yes. was half broke i thought that was mm-hmm. beautifully that was beautifully done so that was definitely like a a major moment and like you were saying like him still coming back for the big things well into like his 90s like he was still like i got y'all hey i got you him him and mark hamill like you would think like you 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 would not even think like as fans i feel like we would get it if they retired like mark hamill's retired from the joker like mad times like he's like oh this is my last time and then he'll come back and do it but it's like we don't ever trip about it like we're never like no mark how could you betray the fans oh we this is like that'll do pick that'll do like like yeah like you, like, you have more than you've earned that. You're welcome you've earned everything yeah this is something that i don't want to go off on too much of a tangent but it is interesting because he was really the first to do it um and i think that for star wars it was incredibly generous of him but he did sell the ability to utilize his voice in future star wars projects to lucasfilm understanding the weight and gravity and how technology is kind of taking things and while typically i'm very much adamant against the use of ai in creative endeavors because there are a lot of talented people out there that deserve to get paid to do that work and then have their stamp on things um it is one of those things where it's like i think it's interesting that he was willing to do so and i do think that for the most part if there is a good vader story to be told i still would want to hear his voice so um i think that like it's the one instance of it where i do feel like i'm kind of okay with this like they're not selling his likeness but his his voice um and it's only for lucasfilm right it's not for everybody to use like it's very specifically like it's meant to be used for star wars um and you know he really loved the franchise so he kind of gets to live on in that way. How do you feel about it? Do you think it like is potentially dangerous from a creative standpoint or like, do you think it it will help keep his legacy alive in in a good way? You know, what's crazy. And I I don't know if it like speaks to the, the, the character or just like the reverence that we have for the actor, but I'm like you, like there's something Darth Vader is kind of like a cheat code in like the AI versus you know let actors be actors fight for me because yeah. it's like I don't know part of him being like a, a a robot and a cyborg and like you said it's not physically James Earl Jones's likeness is like his voice like I find no issue like if they were to use even if it was a situation where they like hired an actor but like digitized the voice to sound like James Earl Jones, which I'm sure would be very easy like for somebody to do. So like having somebody actually delivering the lines, but like alter it. Like Darth Vader for me, and that again speaks to James Earl Jones's delivery, like it, that's his actual voice. Like there's like, they're not doing anything to make it sound robotic. Like, you know, like how C-3PO has like that kind of like echoey box co- sound mm-hmm. behind his voice mm-hmm. a bit. So, you know, that's like an added effect. But James Earl Jones is like, no, he's just great. Like that, he's like, he's just able to manipulate his voice like that. So I kind of weirdly for Darth Vader view his voice as like a tool to be used. So it's like if if he sold the rights to use that tool, 
have at it. <laughs> like, but yeah, it's just like that. That yeah. Darth Vader voice is like has became like its own thing. Like the the and the voice and everything. Like it's like its own kind of living entity. So like if that lives yeah. on, even though the person himself has like moved on, it it doesn't bother me, like at all. I think just don't overdo it, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Don't start like a whole series of Vader movies like with yeah, this using his thing. voice and yeah, like, yeah. like, like it, cameo it, appearances it does, and shit, it's like surprise right, it does appearances. Does happen? His estate should definitely get some sort of kickback. I don't know what the exact terms of the agreement are, um, but like if they're going to use the likeness of his voice, then his family deserves to reap the benefits of that. Um, there's a lot I feel like going on in the industry right now, especially the comic book industry, where it's like the people who are creating these characters see no financial like re- like I don't call it repercussions. I feel like it's a negative connotation. They don't reap the benefit of their characters being utilized and their storylines being utilized for like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I feel like that should change. Um, you know, it's not like oh the, the Kirby family, the Kirby check. estate doesn't get anything for like Spider-Man use and all that stuff. Um, I think it's the Ditko family that doesn't get anything. Mm. Dang. But uh, <laughs> I'd have to double check. It's like, But it's not just them. It's like, you know, I know there's a new Venom movie coming out, and the guy who created Null is not going to get anything. Um, the creators of She-Hulk don't get anything, I don't think. I'm um, really hoping that, because uh, I'm probably not going to see Venom 3. I probably will. Probably won't see it in the theater when it comes out. I won't pirate it, Marvel. So, uh, well, Sony, you could still, you know, well, Disney Plus it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. I'll Hulu it. <laughs> like, but um, I really, 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 really want the inclusion of Null. Even though I know Sony and Marvel have this weird thing, like, oh, whoever uses it first, the other can't. But like, I hope in the shared interest of their um, co-parenting relationship for Spider-Man, the introduction of Null could mean should mean a lot for the MCU. I just hope that, you know, they play nice, especially because like not to make this a Marvel podcast, but like we've seen the Necro Sword in Thor Love and Thunder yeah, right. and, and Null the created the Necro Sword. So it's like, like let's, let's just play ball let's here, just guys. say maybe in Secret Wars and call it that. that that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we're look, go like, off on like a big tangent, right? Yeah, fact, though, fact, though. Um, we here. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, may, maybe there's a third podcast in the works where we, we could go deeper maybe. into get deeper into that. You never know. Potentially, <laughs> you know, yeah. You never know. We do be grinding. Uh, Facts. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I don't have um, too many more thoughts. Uh, I guess like on it. Like I was, I I don't know if it's weird to say this. I guess this is kind of like me, like like using obviously this platform as an outlet. But I I wasn't as sad over his passing because he lived such a long life. I was about to say the, the fact the fact that he was 96 made it uh yeah. gave me brought me peace. Not yeah. Like I was like Yeah, no, of but it. it's but the the acceptance and the peace that is like well, I don't I don't I certainly don't want him to suffer, right? And when you are that old like you're naturally going through through a lot. But at the, at the end of the day, like 96 years old for a human being is such a long period of time as we understand life at this moment and I think it's so great that he got to live such an amazing and impactful life. And his, his reach exists so far outside of Star Wars. Um, just being Mufasa in The Lion King touched so many people. Coming you to know, America, like, like the Sandlot, like yeah. you said, he was he was a, a, a stage actor. Like, my man mm-hmm. was definitely dope. It's so, it's so uh, funny and I'm not comparing the two. They're two completely different actors, but just in terms of like longevity and like gravitas in the acting world, like him and Christopher Lee, I feel like are looked at and like the same high esteem, and they're both like Star yeah. Wars alum. That is a soul, mm-hmm. but it's just like, just in terms of like legendary careers or people who did it in like all different avenues, like did TV, did stage, did film. And they're like legendary, like, like the, the legend of said people are like bigger than the people. Like at this point, like with, Actors right, like it's that. you know it would have been enough for them to be one iconic character. Yeah, yeah. like multiple. Yeah, both of them are several. Yeah, and exactly. The, exactly. They bring so much to those roles, even in, sometimes in like the most limited ways. Like, think if you mm-hmm. think about like Darth Vader's screen time in <sighs> the original trilogy and Mufasa's screen time in The Lion King. Yeah, it's not a lot, but the weight short the, but impactful. The heft, of the impact is just so felt um 
in, in such a in such a great way and I, I think that that's something that like I'm just I'm so happy we got to experience um, his career the way we did grow really growing up with with the roles that he portrayed and and you know obviously sad to hear that he's left this mortal plane but uh you know uh, they, they say it in the Sandlot heroes get remembered legends never die that man will never die never ever 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 he said you want me to pickle the beast he said i don't know kid you're the one with rubber legs (laughs) 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 Uh, love that movie but yeah r.i.p to james earl jones uh like uh like uh we've given this designation to a lot of people that have been affiliated or done work with us uh on our sister podcast db4l uh but he provided the soundtrack to a lot of our childhoods <laughs> yeah. a lot 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 of our core memories are tied to that man which is a crazy thing to think of as like a 90s kids because those star wars movies came out way before we were born so it's just yeah. like the strength which i mean speaks to the strength of the franchise because it's like you couldn't tell me that you know empire and new hope and return and i know that was out of order before oh that's not the order of the movies i was just naming them <laughs> like, <laughs> like you can't tell me that like those aren't my movies like even though like we're like yeah technically the prequel generation was like i was You're so 13. lucky that we were we were generating memories with the original trilogy just before but, the prequels came right out. exactly <laughs> so like you couldn't tell me that like you know the original trilogy like that's not my movies too like i, I feel just as like uh I, I won't say territorial but for lack of a better word i feel just as protective of those films yeah as people who uh went and saw them in the movie theater in real, in real time so to take that boomer <laughs> shout outs to the star wars fans that got that reference because that was a double entendre don't ask me. don't ask him how don't ask him <laughs> don't how. ask me how. well i guess Matt, we can and on. his name was matt that's a triple entendre actually <laughs> man he said dude matt he fucking just... sucks dude <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to um, some more lighthearted news yes. and talk about uh, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, as we oh. know him in the prequel trilogy, uh, has gotten a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Kind of a long time coming. This man has... Near Carrie only... Fisher, fun fact. That's awesome. I did not yeah. know that. Thank you for yeah. sharing. <laughs> I'm super pumped that like the Star Wars fam keeps it, keeps it close over, out there in LA. Uh, but, you know, Ewan McGregor... Moulin Rouge. Um, mm-hmm. We have uh, <laughs> the island. Christopher Robin, <laughs> the island. You know? Did you know that the, that there was supposed to be a nude scene with Scarlett Johansson in that movie? Right. And, and we were Michael Bay took it off the table because he wanted it to be PG thirteen. Fuck you, Michael Bay. You <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> ruined it for all of us. Thanks, bud. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that like random piece of trivia is like in my mind, but like that could have made that movie like, watchable. That movie, that's that's <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> that's, whenever that movie gets brought up, I remember like that trivia fact for some reason. But hey, here we are. It's a good fact. Um, it's a good fun fact. <laughs> uh, also, he played portrayed Christopher Robin. I think I may have already said that. Um, yep. But uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm mid- tra- is it trans spotting? Why can't I? I'm blanking on more you movies. I think that's his. That is, look, that's 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 his his uh, his his uh, um, I was about to say appearance. His performance as Obi Wan was so powerful. It's overshadowing. <laughs> it does over it does overshadow a lot of his career. But he's been in some some other like banger movies. Um, you know, he was in Black Hawk Down. Like Ewan McGregor has had a, had a yo. He's he's it's just he's one. He, weirdly enough, and I feel like they're also kind of comparable. Like him and Viggo Mortensen. I thought Star Wars and Lord of the Rings respectively were like their first movies because like that was like the big thing for me to like have seen them in at that age. Came, like, but then like Carter as I got you. old, yeah, as I got older and like shit would come up and I'll be like, oh shit, look at this guy. He's getting roles. And it was like 10 years before Star Wars and yeah. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, matter of um, fact, let's... he was. Oh, Doctor Sleep, in, the sequel to uh, yeah, The Shining. I was gonna say he was in that Stephen King movie uh, recently, so Dr. which Stephen wasn't King. that bad. I was as as far as like um, 
I'm bunny quoting if this isn't the real. As far as quote unquote unnecessary sequels go, that wasn't the worst. Oh shit. Matter of fact, he uh one of my favorite movies, fucking Big Fish. I love oh, yeah. that movie. <laughs> like, love, love, love that movie. I had I had a uh so <laughs> not to get into like you know for life philosophy and all that shit but like i refer to like shift in people's like perspective i like refer to it as like their awakening like when people like when shit starts to click for people and they start to like right. you know what let me i'm learning how to make life like maximize for myself there's a scene in big fish uh where he's telling a story one of his one of the dad's like real whimsical stories about how he uh had issues growing as a child or he had issues st- not growing like he couldn't stop growing as a kid like he just hit a growth spurt it all happened at once so he was um reading a story about goldfish and basically the analogy was that uh like goldfish that we see as like uh, fish owners are like 10 times smaller than how goldfish actually are sized out in the ocean and the reason that that is is when goldfish are in captivity they purposely stunt their growth so that they can have more space to swim but in doing so it makes like their lungs smaller that's why goldfish have such a short lifespan like goldfish who are pets like goldfish out in the open can live for like years but he was using that analogy basically to say like you know uh that's why the movie's called big fish well one of the reasons but he was using that analogy to say like goldfish is like a, a crazy metaphor for people who like don't allow themselves to become like bigger than their surroundings like people who like maybe from like a small town or from like humble beginnings who like choose to stay in that space like pigeonhole themselves like in that space and just something right. about that like as somebody who like has always had burdened by glorious purpose as i steal the quote <laughs> from loki uh, often but that line just like really was like a moment for me in terms of like chasing my dreams so to speak so you and mcgregor's my guy that's my dude. and that's my obi-wan like i, I love alec yeah, guinness he's, i love alec guinness but he's he's my yeah, Obi-Wan. He, he's my obi-wan <laughs> Yeah, like a hundred percent. He's definitely had more screen time as Obi Wan. Oh yeah, like <laughs> infinitely <laughs> more. <laughs> uh, so so much more. <laughs> um, and there's just a, a lot of great Star Wars moments. Um, but before we cherry pick a few to just highlight here, since this is a Star Wars podcast, of course, yes, um, all just want to let people know, like, hey, go out and check out the. There's several YouTube videos of uh, Hayden spoke at his oh, Star was, like was, Hollywood so Star Wars speech. It was a great great speech definitely listen to it if you're a fan of of hayden and you and like go check it out if you haven't already um but it it was it was an awesome speech and like man i just love that they got to like rekindle their friendship not that i think that they like weren't friends but yeah but but they said like life happened they both had kids he lived in the uk hayden lived here in america things of that so So, yeah that that was that was amazing hayden actually said something uh that it's something that I've always thought about, but like when him saying it, it's like, oh yeah, but he he was talking about in his speech, like basically you and McGregor, like just embodying like who Obi Wan Kenobi is, like that's that he is Obi Wan Kenobi, and it's like when I thought about it, that's definitely I feel like he's a sleepy a sleeper pick for like an actor who is so synonymous to a role that we would never want to see somebody else do it like I feel like we obviously talk about uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man we always mm-hmm. talk about uh, Hugh Jackman and Wolverine you know uh, now that this whole Harry Potter reboot's coming up you know we talk about like Daniel Radcliffe being Harry Potter like there's these or uh, Johnny Depp being Jack Sparrow like you have actors who are like so locked in with the role that it's just like oh that that's them we don't even see it as the character like oh no that's johnny depp or that's robert downey Mm -hmm. jr i feel like ewan mcgregor and obi-wan kenobi are like on that list like just in terms pretty damn it's pretty damn close like like that there's it doesn't matter what he's in he could be you know the lead in the next christopher nolan movie and i would still be like that's fucking obi-wan (laughs) <laughs> or or, or like, even just in re- or even just in regards to like us as fans like even though he's not the original like I would wouldn't want to see another Obi Wan Kenobi like like no yeah, that's that's, fair. that's like yeah. like with Hugh like with Hugh with Wolverine or you know again uh, Robert Downey Jr. or Iron Man like they they did such a great job I mean, bringing those characters to life this fandom unfortunately can't handle it as much as I love Alden Ironreich as Han Solo they 
ever, so many people threw a shit fit over it. So <laughs> the only thing, the, weirdly enough, the only thing that like bothered me about his performance was his eyebrows. That was it. <laughs> I feel like he just had shaggy eyebrows, and Han Solo didn't have shaggy eyebrows. <laughs> and it just kind of that literally well, was the his only brow game got better by a new hope, man. You know what? That that's how I kind of tried to make this. He was like, you know what? He got older, got more mature, learned to like do one of these, lick his fingers, and lay his eyebrows down. But yeah, that was literally the one thing that just like I just kept staring at his eyebrows the whole movie. <laughs> I was like, you're supposed to be a a, a, a sly scallywag nerf herder. Like you know, the sneaky, women are supposed to be throwing the themselves. Yeah. The women are supposed to be throwing themselves after you look like you just woke up, sir. <laughs> I often forget um, that Woody Harrelson's in that movie. He did great in that movie too. Like, I often forget. Yeah, he's fantastic in that movie. Uh that that actually whole cast is just uh, very good um, Big for someone who loves Jedi stories that to me is one of the most fun Star Wars movies so it has a special place in my ranking which we will get to eventually you know maybe in future episodes this Ooh, teaser, foreshadowing this teaser, yeah thank you Matt um, gotcha, bro. real quick before we move on to Skeleton Crew stuff I uh, just want to call out my favorite Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan moment um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna pick a lighthearted one, and it's it's got to be the interactions between Obi Wan and Anakin during the Attack of the Clones chase scene at the beginning of the movie on Coruscant when he's scolding Anakin and Anakin jumps out. And he's like, I hate it when he does that. And yeah, then later in the movie like, we get the callback. He's back, like, Fly, oh. I don't mind. What you're doing is suicide. <laughs> right, and then later we get this is why I hate flying. Ugh, yeah, it gets me every time. It gets me every time. He's like, sorry, How Master. You, Matt? You I forgot you're afraid of flying. He's like, I'm afraid of. He's like, what y'all doing is suicide. Um, so top of my like, right off the top of my head, uh, I have a couple. Uh, so but like the the one that jumps out of my head like the most is the um, the Battle of Heroes. Like we always say, that's my that's my favorite fight uh, in all of Star Wars. Also, my favorite score in all of Star Wars. But just that whole fight, uh, particularly the the ending speech, the with like you, you, are, my my, you are my brother, you my brother, Because I, I, I feel I feel like a part in that interaction that gets like looked over because that was such like a heavy screen. But it's just like when 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 Obi Wan says I loved you and like Anakin like yells back I hate you, like you could see that hurt him. Like he's like, oh, damn, yeah. you hate me, bro. Like, <laughs> like you could tell, like that, like really, like hurt him to his core. Like to see, like basically, we've talked about this many a times. So I'll make people go back and listen and not take away from our views. How they like shifted from like father and son to brothers, like from to between, brothers. Yeah, yeah. Between Did that uh, nest of gun darks mean nothing to you. <laughs> yeah, but um, just to like for him to like still in that moment be like bro like even after all this like i loved you bro like damn like why would you do me like this and just to like have him this this little boy that you took that you raised just like yo as as a parent like i can only imagine that somebody that you know especially in that circumstance because it's like this is gonna sound fucked up but just roll with me uh, as a parent, when you have kids, like biologically, it's just like yeah, like they're they're a part of your being, like they're a physical manifestation of like your DNA. So it's just like yes, you're tied. But also as a person who is adopted, like there is a different level of like I don't want to say loyalty, but uh, like choosing to be a parent for anyone who like adopts a child is just like you you there is i want to say kind of like a heightened sense of like protectiveness because it's just like i chose to bring this child into my life like Mm -hmm. you know not to say like if you choose to have a kid that's not your choice but it's just like you know like through the whole adoption process and i hope this is making sense to people (laughs) but it's just like you know like having the family that would that was chosen as opposed to you know like the the family that is like you know we say all the time blood doesn't make you family but like for them to have chose each other in that moment and it's just like i didn't have obi-wan's just like i just wanted to be a jedi and you know right. abstain after i had sex <laughs> did they or didn't they <laughs> but you know having this little boy who he raised who like he like literally was put in charge of like yell back at you that he hates you and it's just like gut punch bro <laughs> like gut yeah, that's punch. A, it's heavy it's heavy for sure but yeah um, that that's a big he, one obviously the uh the infamous uh camino scene in the rain with the hoodie uh, <laughs> that's obviously always a go and and and, and the hello the and, the, <laughs> and and the hello there 
That's all. That's always. Oh, you know what? I got one. Can I guess it? Can I guess it? Can Please guess go it? ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and try. Chancellor Sith Lords are our speciality. Love that. That 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 wasn't the one. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yes, that is my shit. <laughs> like, I love when um when he finally caved in and used the blaster to kill Grievous. He's like, oh, so Stone uncivilized. <laughs> classic, classic moments. Oh, that was great. That was great. Thank or the, so the, for, uh, the exchange with Obi-Wan and Anakin. Like, no loose, no loose wire jokes. He's like, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. He said, well, all to. Hey, 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 no loose wire jokes. Did I say? I didn't say. Did I say anything? <laughs> that was a good one. And then also the heartbreaking, like, I'm sorry for all of it at, in the oh, Kenobi you know, series. Ugh. Yeah. That, yeah, that was that was heavy. That, that, yeah, that, that whole interaction, that was definitely crazy. Um, also, his very heartfelt, touching speech to Leia about, mm-hmm. you know, you're this and this and this. Those were qualities of your mother. And you're this and this and this. Those are qualities of your father. Like, that also, yeah. like kind of hits me in the feels when i when i rewatch it back and we we talked about this back when we had did our uh uh obi-wan reactions like the when they were on that desert planet where he started seeing like you know hallucinations of anakin and they were like sitting in like that that worm guy's truck and um when he was just talking to leia about padme and we were saying like it's often if you didn't watch clone wars the show it is often lost that Obi-Wan and Padme had a relationship because they don't really share a lot of screen time in the movie. But, like, mm-hmm. they were close. Like, he was with her when she died. Like, she entrusted her children to him. Like, she was just like, yo, like, I'm, it's over for me, bro. Take care of my kids. Like, so it's just like they obviously had a deep trust. So, like, him talking to Leia and tearing up and, like, you know, saying, like, she was my friend. Like, that 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 got yeah. me deep. That, could, that, that one hit me deep. Because, like I said, because obviously they had to highlight you know anakin's tragic turn and their love story so you don't really see too much of the relationship that obi-wan and her had so like for him to like talk to her daughter and tell her things like yeah like that's my friend and i miss her very much like that was like oh yeah oh yeah oh my heart (laughs) very well done one of those things that like you can you can criticize the obi-wan show as much as you want but there were which i heartfelt moments yeah, I, I yo, I didn't even realize that people like really had a lot of problems with that show. Like, cause I, I love. I mean, I, I will say that I'm a blind witness when it comes to Obi Wan Kenobi because he's like my guy. Like, it's like one, it's like one in one a him and Anakin. Like, it's like, but uh, my honestly, my only gripe with this, I think it could have been a movie. Yeah, um, that's and, really and, like and 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 I don't, I don't, I loved Reva's character. I hate that she was how Obi-Wan found out that Vader and Anakin mm-hmm. were the same person. That I was That doesn't biggest. bother me as much, but I can understand where you're coming from. Like yeah. I'm not like you have every right to have that um to feel that way. I just hate is a strong word. <laughs> hate is a strong word. You just liked how it played out. I got you. Yeah, I just um, would have liked him to found out a different way. Like Yeah. And that's fair. Um if I had, if I was pressed to think about a good way for it to happen, I would definitely. It would definitely take me some time. Um, the way that it happened in the book, I I wasn't mad at. Like he was at a bar and heard like people talking about Darth Vader and he or like the name Vader. Yeah, the name Vader yeah. came up and he's like, oh shit! Like I, I didn't. I'm not even mad oh, at I that. Didn't finish him off. Yeah. yeah. Even if he was like when he was like. They could have did it when he was like cutting the meat when he went back to the meat packing place, like right. you know, they're like talking about it. It would have almost been nice to see him have like a panic attack. Like, yeah, he did kind yeah. of, but like he didn't really. They didn't get to like, like sit with it too long. Yeah, but that yeah, would have like been in yeah. a public setting. It would have been kind of cool to see it that way. Or, or um, you know, you know, what could have worked? Rewriting television. Uh, when the Inquisitorius went into the village looking for Jedi, like if he was in the village and like maybe if they were like by the decree of Lord Vader or some shit like that, and he was like. Mm. And he's like, Vader. Vader. <laughs> like, <laughs> the fuck? Last time I saw him, he was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been. He a, was uh, ready. To, he was about to be served at the barbecue. <laughs> 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 there was about ready to take a Canto bite out of him. Did it, dudes? You must smell like leather wrapped in burnt rubbery bacon. <laughs> 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 oh man but yeah but yeah Ewan McGregor <laughs> great guy he deserved well deserved very yeah. very well deserved 
<laughs> on to skeleton crew. <laughs> on to yeah, thank you. Great transition there. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the adversary picture first or the hero picture first? Because we got uh, one of each. Let's talk about the adversary because I like these these things. Like whatever they, these. Be- okay, so we see Vane right from the Mandalorian. Um, yep. Fresh off of season. Is that Jaleel three, White? So do, that is Jaleel White. That oh Jaleel shit! White. Yeah. <laughs> So very exciting, you know, to see him. I <laughs> I saw so many like jokes today, like being posted on Twitter over there. Where, like, oh, since he's a cyborg, his like designation should be like uh, I D dash O like T A T or something like that. Like, did I do that? And it's like, come on, <laughs> let, let the little white like expand like, outside else. of Earth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like I'm I'm very hopeful for him that like he's able to like do this role. And be, you know, just a new character for himself. Beat the Urkel allegations. Like, he's not just Urkel. <laughs> you know what? I feel like, weirdly enough, like, as he's gotten older, like, I feel like he's become, like, a, a cult hero. Like, I feel like now he's just seen as, like, Jalil White. Like, obviously, like, Urkel's, like, his big thing. But it's like, I don't really send out, like, uh, I don't, what the fuck is the word that I was looking for? I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, like, yeah, I don't really, uh, he's not just synonymous, or I don't equate him to, like, I don't think, when you say Jalil White, I don't think Urkel right away anymore. Cause it's like, I feel like the legend behind him as a person has just be, become so, like, grand and, like, wild. <laughs> like, like, but, like, on some of the most interesting man type shit. Like, I feel like he's definitely, uh, been able to shed that but but you know with the new generation of people coming up that might just know him from that but i feel like just with us who like he's kind of shed the oh i'm just urkel thing like he's just like jaleel white it's like, oh that's jaleel yeah. white <laughs> and, a cool and honestly um you know i'm excited to see him play this new role i think like with it being amblin themed there, there's probably room for some comedic elements also mm-hmm. very cool to see like the wolfman uh, yeah, that Wolfman who, thing is which awesome. we did talk about from the trailer, but he, he, did. he looks pretty cool. He's, he's strapped. He's got a lot of blasters on him. Look like they look like uh, uh flintlock pistols, like from like pirates. <laughs> like yeah, pirates. Well, Jude holding. Law also has like a flintlock pistol in on his character design. Um, That's awesome. And so it, it's just both shots seem very cool. Jude Law has a really cool outfit. I think um, this feels like it's going to be very swashbuckly, uh, but in Star Wars. So maybe we will get our that. long-awaited Hondo appearance. Um, I'm just saying, like, well, I mean, we we keep just saying we've said mad different times this would be a perfect landing spot for Hondo, and it doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I'm saying it again, <laughs> like, this will be a perfect landing spot for Hondo. <laughs> like, if we don't get it here, and the next opportunity we get is not the next time Ezra Bridger is on screen interacting with Hondo, I, I would. Be- furious i would still love so much if jude law's character is another survivor of the not as effective order 66 i would still love if that's the best friend that hondo was talking about like oh yeah my best friend was a jedi like it's so instead of kenobi like like yeah uh, i think it's jod is is jude law's character name if like jod was his best friend that'd be so funny like like, i feel like first off such a great callback to rebels by you by the way thank you thank you um yeah, that would be because I feel like it. I feel like the story is easy to write. That like the way the I feel like if Jude Law's character Jod, if the way that he went from Jedi to smuggler was like stowing away on a fucking frigate, Hondo yeah, discovers yeah, him yeah. and Hondo takes him under his wing, like you know, on some like uh Star Lord shit. Like oh yeah, they took me because a kid is easy to fit in the small yeah, spaces yeah, yeah. type time. So I think that would be cool if like that just like that connecting thread if a way to my pull best friend was a jedi like, well, like at least be, i think he was my friend <laughs> yeah that, that'd be cool if this like th- this is the person like like he like hondo basically like raised them raised them up found them and raised yeah them. i love that that'd be cool um we'll we'll see for sure um very cool uh i i, I think it's you know fast approaching faster than uh, i think we anticipated but um i i think the hype is building enough to the point where I have gotten over the space suburbs. Um, I'm, just ready for, I'm ready for more Star Wars. So, like, hit me with it. 
Nice. Um, so this is that's kind of the, the end of this hodgepodge of, of news slash memoriam to James Earl Jones. Uh, but we do have kind of like some programming notes. Matt and I, you know, even though we were taking some time off, we decided to dive into some other things. So I have watched Lego Star Wars Rebuild the Galaxy. Matt, have you done that yet? Not yet. Not yet. But I, it, it will be done by the time. <laughs> by the time That's we okay, it. because he's going to watch it by the next time we do it. And I really fucking enjoyed it and i think that you're gonna have some really fun takeaways for us to discuss Let's on go. next week's episode of and you okay a star wars podcast star and then wars matt podcast. and i have decided that we are finally going to give you our star wars movie rankings hey and that's gonna be we fun. are not gonna do it in the same episode we're gonna let one person go and the other person's either gonna talk mad shit or hype up the picks and then we Big will facts. let the other person get their shit off on the next episode so we have that planned out for you um i'm, I'm excited about that that's gonna be fun it's gonna be a yeah fun one. me too i can't wait to see where you rank things but will it will it live up to my expectations matt probably we sh- but we hey we shall see <laughs> <laughs> we shall see <laughs> but for now that has been us here at Annie, are you okay a star wars podcast you a can star follow wars us podcast. over on instagram and twitter at the letters a and i are you okay under or, yeah, pod. <laughs> underscore. Yeah. underscore. <laughs> I think I think there's an underscore in there. Maybe not. Um, no, it's just A and I are you okay, pod. Uh, also, shout out to the person who just keeps disliking our feed on YouTube. It really helps fuel my drive to be better than the haters. Um, so Boo. keep doing it. Booty is <laughs> Th- thumbs down to you, person. I'm sure it's helping our algorithm. You're the best. Thanks for go. disliking our takes. Why don't um, you come on the podcast and tell us why you keep disliking our takes? That'd probably be bad content. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and you can follow our sister podcast, Dragon Ball for Life, over on their other feed, Dragon Ball for Life podcast. You can follow them on Instagram and Twitter at db4l underscore pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, check us out on YouTube now. Um, if you haven't already, we have a full video interview with stephanie nadani voice of teen gohan and kid goku from back in the day it was a great interview in addition to a bunch of other manga and anime content right now matt and travis are actually reviewing knights of abyss which is the first fan funded um manga and anime by a black creator with a bunch of black characters so it is very much quentin dorsey quentin dorsey killing it um and you can check out Matt and Travis's thoughts about that over there. Uh, do want to drop a shout out to Paul? Just came back from his bachelor party. He's the Dragon super, Paul GT. Uh, Dragon Paul GT, the other producer that, that helps us get our shit done and saves my ass. Uh, he's preparing for a wedding, and I'm just super hyped for my childhood best friend. Um, so even though he likely Paul. won't listen to this, Paul. it's my man Deacon. <laughs> it's my man Deacon. <laughs> and obligatory shout out to uh, our main man Jeremy, who we. Hey. We're mentioning every episode, and I just didn't want to, you know, forget. Can never it's forget about the Jeremy and Mrs. Jeremy and Baby Jeremy and Darth Vader. That's what we, that's what we call her. Uh, yeah. So, um, I guess Matt, why don't you close this bad boy out? And we'll be continuing to come back with episodes of Annie. Are you okay? And I promise we won't take a long hiatus again. Word, word. We pre-planned some shit for you guys, so <laughs> yes, you're, you're stuck with us consecutively for some time. So you're welcome. <laughs> but uh, anti maniacs, you know it's like we always say here in a in a galaxy not so far away. Uh, it could be James Earl Jones, you know it could be E. T. Phone Home, you know it could be an auto loan, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or it could be May. <laughs> Life can be a beach, but you guessed it. As long as there's no sand, any gonna be okay. B O K. May the force be with you, man. And with you. Later, nerds. Deuces. We end.